Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the topic flywheel and the terms related to it. For the understanding of this flywheel, we will consider this sewing machine. This is a pedal and this is a larger wheel and it is connected to the smaller wheel using this node. So when we apply this pressure on this pedal, the larger wheel starts rotating causing the movement, rotational movement of the smaller wheel. And if we stop applying this pressure, then also this larger wheel continues to rotate, causing the rotation of the smaller wheel and after some time it comes to rest. So that means even if the input is stopped, we are getting a constant output. And that is because the rotational energy possessed by this larger wheel is used for doing this work and this larger wheel is having an inertia that is a rotational inertia and that resists the change in this rotational speed so this is the principle of flywheel so a flywheel used in a machine serves as a reservoir which stores energy during the period when the supply of energy is more than the requirement and releases it during the period when the requirement of energy is more than the supply. So basically this flywheel is used in reciprocating engines because the power is developed in only one stock. Now we will see what is mean by a turning moment diagram. So this represents, this figure represents the slider crank mechanism. So it is a reciprocating engine. So this is a piston. It can have this to and fro motion in this direction. And Fp is a force or piston effort. And this represents the connecting rod. And the force acting on the connecting rod is marked as Fq. And the connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft here. At this point, you will be having the crankshaft through the crank. So, when this crank is in line with this line of stroke, this angle will be 0. Theta will be equal to 0. So, theta means it is the angle made by the crank with respect to this line or the crank rotation, crank angle. So, what is the what component is actually causing the rotation of the crank that we will see. So if this force Fq is acting here, we can resolve it into two components. One it is the normal component to the crank Ft, marked as Ft. And this is the parallel component which is marked as Fb. So here we can see that this point we are having this crankshaft. So the component which is parallel, it will be causing a thrust at this crankshaft. So it does not help the rotational movement of the crankshaft. So which component is actually causing the rotational movement? This component, Ft, is causing the rotational movement. That is the crank will be rotating in this direction. So what is the twisting moment acting at this point O or the torque acting at the point O? That is equal to Ft into the perpendicular distance. That is a crank radius. Perpendicular distance means Co. That is a crank radius. Now, after some uh, derivative, after deriving it, it has been uh, found out that the turning moment or the torque can be found out by this equation. That is Ft into R into sin theta plus sin 2 theta divided by 2 into square root of n square minus sin square theta. What is Fp? It is a piston effort. R it is the crank radius and n means it is the ratio of crank length and the connecting rod length. So these three terms remains constant. So which is the variable here? It is a theta. Theta means it is a crank angle. So here theta is varying from 0 to 360 degree. So T is a function of theta. 
So when we look at the maximum value and minimum value, if the theta value becomes zero, that is the crank position is here, this T will be minimum or T will be zero. This value becomes zero. And when this theta is equal to 90 degree, this becomes the maximum value. So I can draw a graph. This is a graph along the y-axis turning moment, along the x-axis crank angle is taken. So this is for one revolution that is 0 to 360 degree. So this is a curve we are getting and this is actually for the single cylinder double acting engine. The curve is having 0 to maximum value T max here. Then it is coming back to 0 again and it is again going back to maximum and it is coming back to 0. So this is known as this. This diagram is known as the turning moment diagram. So the definition it is a turning moment diagram or a crank effort diagram is a graphical representation of the turning moment or the crank effort for various positions of the crank. The turning moment is taken as the ordinate and crank angle as the adjacent. Now we can see one more term here, it is T mean. What does mean by T mean? Now we can see that here we are having this crank shaft and this is the crank. So when the crank is rotating, a resistance will be offered at this point against this rotation of the crank. And that resistance also, it is known as the mean resisting torque. So always this has to overcome the resistance offered by this resistance offered at this point so that we can get this rotational motion of the crank. So that resisting motion, resisting torque, it is named as T mean. For, for the entire cycle, the T mean will be the same. And uh, to overcome this mean resisting torque, the work done by the system should be equal to this area, that is A, A, F, E, that is turning moment into this crank angle, work done per cycle. That will be given the work done per cycle. Now we will see the turning moment diagram for a single cylinder double acting steam engine. This ha we have seen that. So this is the T mean and this is the T max and here it is value it is 0. So here we can see that the energy actually required for overcoming this mean resisting torque it is P B C Q. But actually we are having a value, additional value B, B, C, this area. So here we are having an excess energy which is greater than this T mean. But when you consider this point C to D, we actually need this area that is Q, C, D, R. That is the energy required to overcome this mean resisting torque. But we are actually having only this much area this area under this curve, this curve. So this represents C, C, D. This is the energy actually required, additional energy required to overcome this mean resisting torque. And this energy will be supplied by the flywheel. So in this figure, this energy shows it is the additional energy, excess energy, and this energy will be stored in the flywheel and here we need energy from the source, outside source and this will be supplied by the flywheel. So here we can use the flywheel to get a constant speed or the fluctuation of the speed can be uh, made, means uh, smoothened. And this one represents the turning moment diagram for a flow stock cycle internal combustion engine. Here we are having this uh, T mean line here. So this much uh, work is 
which work should be done or this much energy energy is uh, desired for overcoming this TME plus the main locus in top but we are having only excess energy during this expansion stop or working stop and this energy will be stored in a flyway and uh, during this remaining operation that is suction, compression and exhaust this rotational energy possessed by the flyway will be transmitted to the crankshaft and in that way we can more or less we can maintain the speed a constant or the fluctuation in speed can be made constant so thank you for watching thank you